It is a nice dream to think about money just falling from the sky, but it doesn't happen. Right now, many Americans are struggling to pay their bills and they're putting themselves further in debt just to get by. So today on Two Wants to Know, we're answering your questions and tackling your questions about debt, about credit cards, about money and finances so that you can be in a better financial position. Joining me today and answering your questions, credit card insider, senior analyst Nathan Grant and money expert Janae Adams. You can text your questions to these experts by doing this number right here, 336-379-5775. Again, text only, do not call. All right, April is designated as National Literacy Month. So Credit Card Insider just completed a survey about kind of all different things, mishmash of credit cards. So Nate, let's start there with your top three findings. Yeah, so we had a bunch of questions about various financial topics for Financial Literacy Month, but uh, some of the biggest takeaways were that a, nearly a quarter of those surveyed uh, said they'd made at least one late payment since the start of 2020, and another 4% were unsure if they even had or not. And, you know, we know the dangers of late payments, so that was uh, one thing that was kind of a surprise. Uh, over 23% of respondents had to get a new credit card due to either credit card fraud or stolen credit card information since the start of 2020, and 85% of people said that they thought credit scores are included on your credit reports, and they are not. So, they are uh, not, no. Really but the credit score is so important, isn't it, Janae? Yeah, it, it is, especially if you have to look at things that you need to buy, if you are having to take out debt and so forth, they look at a credit score and you know value you on that in most cases. What was interesting to me is over the years, we've learned that a credit score can also play into whether you get a job, whether you get an apartment. Yeah, that's some some of the things. So sometimes you have to try to see if someone would sell you your house on their own for cash or either be able to go into an apartment for someone who just owns their rental. That's what I did in Indiana. They didn't look at my credit score. They just said, you got the money, you can stay here. <laughs> yeah, okay, but for the rest of us, we need to make sure that that credit score is good so that it allows us to have some more choices there. Um, Janae, I know that one thing that's top of your mind is all this stimulus money that's coming yeah. out and everything that is included in the rescue package. So tell me about some of the things that are on the forefront of your mind. Yeah, so definitely that they are extending the housing relief, housing and rental relief. So if you're someone who's watching that's been having problems as far as paying your rent, paying your mortgage, reach out to those that can help you pay for that or at least can put that on a standstill until everything gets back on your feet, whether you're getting a job or whether you have some money in for your tax refund or that stimulus check that comes in. All right, and so we do have a question here about what is the best way to pay off a student loan? So I'm thinking, Janae, that's in your wheelhouse. Yes, and so this is the best time right now, especially if you have a federal student loan, it is on pause, which means that anything you pay to the principal is gonna bring that balance down, which means you're going to not be paying any interest, and that leads to you paying off that student loan debt a lot faster. If you have a private student loan, always try to pay extra on the principal so it can bring it down faster and you can pay it off faster. That's what I did with 25 grand of student loan debt. That's how I got um, done in two years or less. And I don't want you to miss that at home. 25 grand in student loan debt. She got debt and she did it in two years. That is making it happen for sure. All right. Hey, Nate, when we were talking about the credit score and the credit report being very different, just for folks to clarify, what is a credit score? What is a credit report? And what did the two tell you? So uh, one thing that's important to know, and this is a good thing for Financial Literacy Month, is that you actually have many credit scores. They're not just one score. Um, there's uh, hundreds of smaller uh, scoring systems, but some of the more popular ones are like FICO or Vantage Score, which are uh, different agencies that do look at your credit reports and uh, put together your scores. But that's the key difference is that it's the information in your credit scores that goes into your credit reports. So uh, you can't, when you're looking at your credit report, you're not going to see the scores themselves on there. It's just the information based off of your payment activity, how long you've had credit, how much credit you have, uh, your credit utilization, which is how much credit you're using in relation to your maximum limits. Uh, all sorts of factors like that go into it. So um, it's important to monitor your credit reports. And uh, since the pandemic began, you're now able to check your credit report for free, at least until April. April 22 uh, once per week for free. It usually was once per year. So uh, definitely take advantage of that to kind of see where you're at and make sure there's not any inconsistencies and stuff in there.
Yeah, you can check it once a week. That means if anyone is opening up a credit card or a loan in your name and you don't know it, you can check it and you can see it quickly instead of a couple of months going by and a whole bunch of charges being racked up. So we want you to be able to do that. We're going to put that link for annualcreditreport.com uh, in our web story for you today. That way it's easy for you to see. All right, it is uh, 534. We've got one more segment of this uh, credit, money, financial information. What we want you to do is text your question in. We'll be right back.